I traveled to the Faroe Islands to shoot an Avatar inspired film, but when I came back and started on the edits, the sound design was awful. Every sound I would add felt edited and unnatural. I was completely stuck and afraid that I would publish a video that people would hate. So I dug up my old books from film school and discovered a few techniques that I totally forgot about. And once I uploaded that video, I was overwhelmed with the positive responses about the sound design. In fact, the most talked about topic was the sound design and how much they liked it. And the crazy thing is that I didn't really do that much. I simply followed a few steps that brought my video to a whole new level. You know that feeling when you finish a video that uncertainty? You have no idea whether or not people are going to like it. Well, for sound design, what this video is about, we can follow a set of rules. And if you implement those techniques, you can be certain that your sound design is going to be amazing. I have a shot of someone running. This is Ellen, by the way. She's the one who performed all the avatar stunts. So anyways, I add the sounds of the footsteps underneath. Sounds logical, but it doesn't really work. We can hear that the sound is edited and not really part of the video. So ideally, we should have recorded the sound on location, but that leads us to another problem. Sound design is all about pulling attention. Try and make a list of all the sounds that you see in this shot of Ellen running. Now, I'm gonna help you with that. So we have the footsteps, and then there are the rubbing of her clothes because she's running. There's the ocean, the waves. And when I think of an ocean, I think of seagulls. There was a village behind us, so perhaps a car that drives by. Oh, and that group of people who were shouting at us. Now, I'm probably forgetting a bunch of sounds, but here's how that list looks like, or here's like. Ugh, that's bad. Well, first of all, none of these sounds draw attention. Or better yet, all of them are trying to draw attention. If you're standing in a group of people and everybody screams, then nobody stands out. But if everyone would talk normally and you would suddenly scream, I bet all the eyeballs are pointing towards you. Stop screaming. And it's the same with sound. You can't have everything at max volume. But then what sounds do I keep loud? And which one should it be quieter? Well, that depends on where you want to draw attention to. Ask yourself what's happening happening in the shot. Ellen is running and a wave from the ocean has just gone over the beach so her feet start to get wet. So the sound of her footsteps and the splashing water is what I would make prominence. The next question you need to ask yourself is how loud the most prominent sound has to be. If I were to gain the audio so that it peaks at the zero decibel, it would not be right. It are footsteps, not an explosion. And second of all, the footsteps are a couple of meters away from the camera, so I would put them at around minus 6 decibels. That is my most prominent sound, so all the other sounds need to be below that. And ask yourself that same question with every sound. How prominent do I want it to be? The great thing is that the volume of something doesn't have to be realistic. You know, on that location, the wind and the ocean was probably much louder, but I chose to put them in the background so that my focus really goes to the footsteps. In fact, there are many sounds that I didn't include include, like the car driving by, those people who were yelling at us. So if I were to use the actual sound from that location, it would be pretty bad. And that's the reason why you shoot ads and mix sounds. But this leads us to a new problem. You see, recording on location has its benefits too. That's also why I carry the microphone with me all the time. It's a very special mic, in fact. This right here is the Lark M1 from Holy Land. They sponsored the entire film project, so I'm super thankful for that. But I'm also very happy that I took this mic with me. In a nutshell, this is a wireless system with two transmitters and one receiver. And it is so small that I could easily snap it onto my camera and it didn't get in the way. Most of the time I didn't even realize that I had a mic plugged in. That was a pleasant surprise when I started editing. And since there are two transmitters, I could capture the sound from up close by the talent and from the camera. These are two mono signals which are sent over the stereo, so I could choose which mic I wanted to hear when editing. Now, even though your subject is sometimes further away, it's nice to draw focus to it. And you can make that really stand out by using that up close sound. The storage case that the mics comes in is at the same time a charging station, so you'll have battery for the entire day. Recently they announced a couple of new colors, which is a really nice personal touch. And it is super easy to use. You just plug it in and it works. There's one button to enable here clear noise cancellation, and as the name suggests, it's going to filter out ambient noise through a very efficient way. Although I only recommend to enable that during interviews or something. It's always better to capture the full audio when you're planning to use it in an edit. It's a high fidelity sound signal of 16-bit, and that signal goes up to 200 meters 
meters, which is insane for such a small mic. So definitely check out the Lark M1. There's a link in the description down below. And so recording the sound with that mic gave me the true tone of the environment, something a downloaded sound effect doesn't have. That's why I did try to use as much captured sound as I could. But as I was saying with the running shots, there was a lot going on. I was not able to separate the sounds to get a better mix in volumes. So I filled up a bucket with water, poured it outside, and I would record myself stepping in that water. Nothing else was going on in the background, so I had the perfect sound recording. It's outside, so it matches the environment, and it are only the wet footsteps. But you don't always have the ability to record every single sound. And let's be honest, downloading a stock audio clip is just much easier. However, that sound effect misses the environment tone, because who knows where it was recorded. Well, in Premiere Pro, if you have your essential sound panel open, we can choose the option sound effects. From there, we can add a reverb to the sound. There's even one for outdoor audio and a slider to control how much that reverb should be. And that is a great step in the right direction. But there's one last thing missing to really make your sound design great. Not only it needs to have the right mix and the reverb, but also the right tone. Let me visualize that for you. Here's a shot where Ellen puts down her foot. I got an actual audio recording of that, but for some reason the sound just didn't fit. <laughs> It was the right volume and had the right reverb, but something was missing. It's a pretty heavy action in a close-up, so it's super prominent and the sound is just regular. Making it louder doesn't make it better. It's the tone that we need to change. I oftentimes just like to use the rate stretch tool in Premiere and just stretch out the audio clip a bit. This will make the sound deeper. We're lowering the pitch or the tone. And something simple as that can add so much more body to a sound. Alternatively, you can use the pitch shifter effect for if you don't want your clip to be longer. This is something that I was doing constantly throughout the entire edit. And before you say, but Jordy, you're losing out in the higher tones. Well, that's right. When you stretch a clip for too long, it becomes too muffled, too much bass. An easy fix for that is if you would duplicate your audio clip first and then stretch out one of them. You're mixing the original sound with one that has more bass. So that same sound effect just became much more rich. And just like video can change in tone, your audio should too. We can speed ramp a video, making it suddenly go faster. A great way to create a natural transition between two clips, by the way. But that means that the tone of the audio has to change too. And with the pitch shifter, you can animate the pitch, which enhances that transition. Now, a couple of days ago, I tried to make the earth bending effect from my film through an alternative technique. It's a very short video and really fun to watch. You can check it out right here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Holy Land, for the support. And as always, stay creative.